morning, everybody. Again, my name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here at the Springs Church, and I just want to welcome everyone here and uh, say Happy New Year to you. I believe that 2019 is going to be a fantastic year, not only for our church, but, but for you, for your family. And I'm going to encourage you as, the, as I share this message today that if you, will, if you will put God first in your life, this can be one of the best years that you've ever had. If you, if you make God first and you prioritize your relationship with Him above all else, this is going to be the best year of your life. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, right? That doesn't mean that the Christian life is going to be a walk in the park, but it, what it does mean is that as you go through this life, you will know God, and you will have hope, and you will have salvation, and you will know what it means to live in freedom, and you will know what it means to live a life of purpose and fulfillment as you go through this year. And so if you're here today, and I just like to tell you this at the, at the front end of any message, if you're here today and you're just checking out things, you're checking out Christianity, you're checking out the church, you're checking out the pastor, see if he makes any sense with his messages, who knows, or maybe you're, you're re returning to the faith of your childhood, or maybe you're not even sure that there's a God, or you're not sure about the Bible, I want you to know, and we want you to know as a church body, you're welcome here. You're welcome here with your questions, you're welcome here with your doubts, your uncertainties, and we pray that the God of heaven reveals the truth to you about who he is and the truth to you about uh, how much he loves you and cares about you. I want you to know today that we're a Holy Spirit-filled church. We are a body of believers that when we passionately believe beyond any shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is our soon-coming King. He is returning very, very soon. Jesus is the bridegroom king. This is what the Bible teaches. And we are his beloved bride. And one day very soon, uh, King Jesus will be returning for his pure and spotless bride. And we desire as a church to be ready for that return. We desire as a church to be found close to God, close to his heart, living according to the truth of his word found in the Holy Bible and found working in his harvest fields when he returns. We believe that with all of our heart. And, and as we begin this new year, as we begin to embark into 2019, it's crucially important that we remember to keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. Someone, someone once said, uh, and, it's, and it's one of those things that it's, it's a cliche, but it's a, a cliches or cliches often for a reason. But someone said this, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. All right. And so what I want us to do today is think about the main thing. Think about our relationship with God. Think about your life. Think about how you're living your life. And are you living in a way that pleases him? Are you living in a way that you're, you're happy with? I heard a story about, um, uh, you guys know Sherlock Holmes and those stories, the uh, investigative story. Well, Sherlock Holmes and his partner, uh, Dr. John, you know his name? Watson. Okay, Dr. John Watson were, ca were tent camping one night. Uh, and in the middle of the night, uh, Sherlock Holmes awakened and he woke up Watson said, dear, my dear Watson, wake up and look at the sky above. And what does this tell you? Sherlock, my friend, it tells us that the universe is great. It is vast. The stars remind us of just how vast God's creation is. Yes, Mr. Watson, it does. But there is something even more obvious. Look again. And what conclusion do you reach this time? Mr. Watson thought for a moment. And he said, the, the vast and countless stars in the sky tell us, what is man? What is man? We are so small compared to the vastness of this universe that we live in. Yes, my dear Watson, but that's not what I see first. It, it is right in front of you. It's so simple and it, it's so hard to comprehend that you do not see this. 
Then tell me, Sherlock Holmes, what do the stars in the sky tell us? My dear Mr. Watson, they tell us that someone has stolen our tent. Okay, so what's the point? So at times, simple things, and oftentimes the most obvious and the most profound things are ignored while we're working on making life work. While we're working on trying to figure out what's going on in our lives, while we're working on focusing on the wrong things, while we're working in our own strength, in our own wisdom to make life work for us, we can easily neglect and ignore the simple things. The things that are most obvious. Listen to me as we read the scripture today. I want you to know that this is simple. But some of the most simple things found in the word of God are also the most powerful and the most profound And so let me say this to you. Let me reiterate this again to you. If you're taking notes, you can jot this down. But I believe this with all my heart. 2019 can be the absolute best year of your life. Not the easiest, but the best year of your life if it is the best year of your life spiritually. If it is the best year of your life spiritually, if you are intentional about putting God first, If you are intentional about hungering and thirsting to know him more. If you are intentional to learn about what it means to live free in Christ. If you're intentional about discovering your purpose and making a difference in this life. I promise you this year can be the best year that you've ever had in your life. Amen. And My challenge for us this year. And my challenge for each one of you, just look me in the eyeballs for a second. I challenge you, go all in with God. Live, learn what it means to live your life fully surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because when you are there in that place, you you will discover what joy really is. You'll discover what peace of God really is as you go all in with him. Learn to yield yourself. Learn to tame your tongue. Hello. Learn to yield yourself as an instrument of the Holy Spirit. Learn to learn to just say, yes, Lord. When he corrects you, when he disciplines you, when he teaches you something new, learn to accept that with joy and say, yes, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for taking me to the next level. Thank you for keeping me on the right path. I thank you for that. Learn to say yes, because when we have a simple focus on loving our God, on the joy of prayer, on the wonder of worship, when we have a simple focus on the beautiful depth of Bible study, on the strengthening fellowship with other believers, when we have a simple Focus on the, on the fulfillment that we enjoy when we serve and impact somebody else. The Holy Spirit will absolutely transform our lives like never before. As we enter into uh, this new year, just like we've, we've done since we've started the Springs Church, we've always entered in with a time of prayer and fasting. And if you haven't heard about it, I want to invite you into it. What we're doing is for the next 21 days, starting today, we're entering into a time of prayer and fasting. And since the beginning of our church back in 2015, we've set our hearts to be people of prayer. People of calling out to God. People who put God first in their lives. And our rally, rally cry has been very simple. It's just pray first. Pray first. In every situation, whether good or bad, we try to pray before we act. Many times what we do without even, think about it, without even thinking about it is we act first, right? And then we pray and we ask God to bail us out of that situation that we got ourselves into. But prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. 
And when you discover the beauty of daily conversation with God in prayer, you'll experience the presence of God in your everyday life that will absolutely transform your life. And so before the day begins, we learn to pray first. Before you go to bed, we learn to pray first. Before you tuck your kids in for the night, we learn to pray first. Before you go to work, before you go to school, before you send that text or that email, hello, before you eat, before you drive, before you travel, when bad things happen, before bad things happen, in every situation, what do we need to do? Pray first. Do you know how powerful prayer is? Prayer changes everything. So I want us to talk about that uh, for just a moment this morning because I believe that this some spiritual breakthroughs, this is up on the screen, some spiritual breakthroughs can only happen by prayer and fasting. Let me, let me tell you that one more time. Let me repeat it. Because some of you may be in a place in your life where you are desperate for a breakthrough. In your own spiritual walk with God, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your finances, in your, in your own walk, in your own uh, spiritual growth. What, whatever situation you may find yourself in, you may be here and you may be absolutely desperate at your wit's end. And you need a breakthrough. And let me tell you, some spiritual breakthroughs can only happen by prayer and fasting. Let me show it to you in scripture. If you would, turn with me to Matthew chapter 17. Or if you have your uh, sermon notes there in your worship guide, you can follow along. But in Matthew 17, it says this. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. And he often falls into the fire or into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You see, there was a problem because before the disciples, they were casting out devils. They were healing the sick because Jesus had delegated his authority to them. But in this situation, this, this dad with the problem of, with his son, he says, there's a problem. Your disciples can't do anything. Your, there's no, your disciples have no power. They have no power to heal in this situation. And I want you to see what Jesus says as a response to this. He says, look at it in this next verse. You unbelieving. Everybody say unbelieving. unbelieving. And perverse. Say perverse, perverse. Generation. Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Don't you love Jesus? Oh, my goodness. Bring the boy here to me. Notice that Jesus identifies the problem with his description of this generation. He said that, th that, that they were unbelieving. In other words, they, they were faithless. They were, they were weak. and there was, there, was, there was no relationship with God. There was no intimacy with God. There may have been no little or no prayer life. There was little or no hearing of God's word or receiving of God's word. Therefore, there, there was no power and there was no faith in their lives. The other word is perverse. What's that mean? Well, it could mean twisted or crooked. Or there's, in other words, there's too much of a relationship with the world. There's too many attachments with the things of this world. Therefore, there was no faith and there was no power for the disciples to heal this boy. So do you see that with me? Do you see that? There was, there was a unbelieving and there was perverse. There was, un, there was unbelieving because there was no prayer life. There was perverse because there was too much influence of the world. Do you see, you see where I'm going with this? Okay, so he said, let's keep reading in uh, Matthew 17. So Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy. And he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private. Well, I would have done the same thing. I would have been like, Jesus, you got to give me some insight here because I don't understand what just happened. They came to him in private and asked, why? 
why couldn't we do that? Why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, look at this, because you have so little faith. Because you have so little faith. And I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Look at this. Nothing will be impossible for you. And over in Mark, another gospel, the same story is in there. But this, these two verses uh, are also in Mark that were not in Matthew. And look at this. And when he, and when he had come into that, to the house, his disciples asked him privately, remember, why? Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, look at this line. This is what I want us to pay attention to for the next few minutes. This kind can only come out but by prayer and fasting. This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. What is prayer? Prayer is communion with God. It's being with God. It's talking to God. It's God talking to you. Prayer is drawing near to God. And prayer builds up our faith. Prayer strengthens us, nurtures our faith, helps us to believe God for big things. Fasting on the other hand, is separating ourselves from worldly influences. Separating ourselves from worldly attachments and distractions. So let's put this together. I want you to think about this this morning. I don't know if you've ever thought about this in this way before, but together, prayer and fasting is the antidote to unbelieving and perverse. You following with me? Okay. Prayer and fasting is the antidote to unbelieving and perverse. Jesus taught that great power for ministry and spiritual breakthroughs is produced when we pray. When we draw near to God in faith. And, we, and when we do this, we feed our spirits. Man, we feed our spirits. And when we fast... We separate ourselves from the influences and, and the attachments of this world. In other words, we starve our flesh. We pray, we feed our spirits. We fast, we starve our flesh. And listen to me, great spiritual power is produced when we do that together. So I want to give you some encouragement as we begin this season of prayer and fasting. Number one, jot this down if you're taking notes with me. Number one, set your prayer objectives. Set your prayer objectives. Why are you fasting? You should be clear on this. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it for spiritual renewal in your own life? Is it for guidance? Is it for healing? Is it for the resolution of certain personal problems that you may be handling? Uh, or is it for, for grace to deal with a loss or a, spe a special difficult situation that you may be facing? The point is, ask the Holy Spirit to clarify his leading and give you some objectives, some clear goals, some clear objectives for your prayers. This will enable you to pray specifically and to pray strategically. Now, if you call this church your home, you call me your pastor, one of the things I want to ask you to do is put me and my family on your prayer list, okay? Put all of our leaders, put Pastor Adam, Pastor Rory, put Amanda, the worship team, uh, everybody who serves as a leader of our church, pray for our leaders. Not only our leaders, but pray for our vision to be fulfilled, the vision that God has. For his church. Pray that people would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just giving you some examples right here. If you need something to pray for, pray for this. P pray for people to come to know God. Pray for people. Pray for our life groups. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our apprentices, our host homes. Uh, pray for every member of our group. Uh, pray for people to take their next steps. Pray for people to, to be courageous, to be brave, and to just say, yes, God, I'm willing to do what you ask me to do. 
Pray for all of our dream team. Pray for all of us who serve other people. And pray for our finances. Pray that God abundantly provides and prospers the church so that we can fulfill the mission that he's called us to. Because we need to remember this. This is the truth found in James chapter 4. You do, you do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on yourself, on your own pleasures. Number two, uh, encouragement I would tell you as we enter into this season of prayer and fasting is this. Decide what type of fasting you're going to do. Don't go into it with a bunch of unanswered questions or just going. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants. No, think about it. Pray about it. What kind of fast will you do? You could fast certain types of food. You could do a Daniel fast. It's popular these days. Uh, you could abstain from all kinds of food and do liquid only. Uh, you could abstain from entertainment. You could uh, put down your phones for a while. You could shut off your social media for a while. You could, do, you could look at your life and say, what are the things that are stealing my time with God? You could fast those things. But remember this, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Jesus taught this. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men that they are fasting. Okay, I read something on uh, Facebook the other day that one of my friends posted, and they said, if you pray a lot, you don't have to announce it. You show it by your life. It's the same thing with fasting. If you're going to fast, you don't have to t go around saying, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, look at me, look how spiritual I am. No, you don't have to do that. You show your spirituality by the way that you live. Amen? I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting. But look at this, but only to your father who is unseen. And, and look at this, your father who sees what is done in where? In secret will do what? He will reward you. Choose a fasting, choosing a fasting plan, I tell people this, it's a very personal thing. It should be just between you and God, what type of fast that God is calling you to. Because the truth is, we're all in different places in our walk with God. And our spirituality should never be a cause for comparison or competition. And there is nothing more inherently spiritual about one type of fast as opposed to another. So your personal fast should, should present a level of challenge to it, and it's a level of obedience to it. You should spend time seeking God about what He wants you to do and follow His lead. Number three is this. Make it a heart thing, and not so much a food thing. <clears throat> it's about your heart before the Lord. It's about your heart in, in that secret place with Him. It, it, we can get so caught up in, oh, we got to eat certain kinds of food, or we're going to give up fast food, or we're going to do this or that, and it becomes about that which you are giving up and less about your prayer life with God. And so as we enter this time, let's make a conscious decision. It's not going to be about the food. It's not going to be about the, all the externals and following the rules to the T of whatever type of fast that we choose. No, but it's going to be about our hearts. It's going to be about our hearts. Joel chapter 2, it says this, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting, and weeping and mourning, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. In other words, your priority, your attention should be an internal one. It should, your, your attention should be based upon your relationship with God in your heart, not all the externals. 
Number four, I would tell you this. This is a great time to put to death the flesh. Nobody's really excited about putting to death the flesh. <clears throat> I can tell you some of the most uh, difficult times that I've ever experienced is during a fast, especially during the first few days of a fast. I start getting cranky like nobody's business because all of my heart issues, all of my attachments to this world, all of my fleshly desires start coming right up to the top. And my wife can tell you, thank goodness she's not in here at the moment, but <laughs> Pastor Brian, mild and sweet, <laughs> turns into a monster when I begin a fast usually. And I have to watch myself and I have to make sure that I'm, I'm very intentional because I, I have to remember I'm feeding my spirit, but I'm putting to death my flesh. And it's painful, but it's rewarding. And it's where life happens. And that's the power of a fast. You see, the Holy Spirit and our, and our flesh are at war against one another. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. And that Holy Spirit wants us to live for God, wants us to please God. But we have often trained ourselves to obey our flesh instead which is against God, which is even hostile towards God. The flesh wants to live for and please ourselves, right? The spirit wants to live for and please God. And there's a war going on inside of us, and nothing teaches our flesh to submit to the Holy Spirit more powerfully than prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting breaks spiritual bondages like nothing else can. In Romans chapter 8, verse 13, Paul said, For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will find life. You will live. Put to death the flesh. Everybody excited about that one? Okay. Number five, and this is where you can get excited, is to expect results. Expect spiritual results. Expect God to show up in a powerful way. Expect breakthroughs. Expect provision. Expect blessing to come upon your life. Isaiah said it this way. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. And you will cry for help. And the Lord will say, here I am. Expect results when you enter into a time of prayer and fasting. There was one time that Ashley and I were praying and fasting and we had, a, we had a need. We, had, we were, were praying for guidance. We were praying for direction from God. And we were in a corporate uh, church. We were in a church setting that was doing a prayer and fasting corporately together. But we had a specific need. And we were praying for that direction. And during the last week of that fast, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Las Vegas. And that was actually the turning point. That was the, the calling, that was the initiation of us picking up our families and moving from Tennessee out here to obey the Lord and to begin a church. But where was it birthed from? It was birthed in a time of prayer and fasting. And that's what I'm praying for each of us today is as we seek the Lord and as we have those personal needs ourselves that you will hear from God. And that you will experience his power and his strength and his presence in a way that maybe you have never experienced before. As a result of you diving in to this season of prayer and fasting with us. And I want to ask you, will you join us? Will you join us in this time of prayer and fasting? As we close, I want to draw our attention back to the main thing. 
Remember, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing, right? <clears throat> Jesus gave us what we commonly call the great commandment. <clears throat> Jesus called it, when he described this commandment, he called it the first, the greatest, the most important commandment. Look at it in Matthew chapter 22, verse 33. This is, this is what Jesus said, this is the first and the greatest commandment. How many of you know if the Son of God is telling you this is the first and the greatest thing, you better perk up and listen to what he's about to say. Over in Mark chapter 12, <clears throat> we're going to read it starting in verse 28 through 44. But listen, friends, if you're looking for a truth to focus your life on in 2019, if you're looking for a New Year's resolution like no other, if you're looking for clarity and purpose and meaning and peace and joy in your life, look no further than what we're about to read, okay? This comes from Mark chapter 12. This is, this is the account. It says this, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Notice that Jesus had given them, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked Jesus, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Pay attention to these words, guys. Listen to this with fresh ears this morning, church. The most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Then he quotes from Deuteronomy. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. Beloved friends, children of God, this is the main thing. Love the Lord your God. If you center your life upon this truth this year, if you make this your New Year's resolution, 2019 promises to be one of the best years of your life. Will you love the Lord your God? The Holy Spirit, as I've been praying for uh, our church and just praying in general, the Holy Spirit, I believe, is restoring this commandment, this first and great commandment. He's been restoring this to first place again to the body of Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He's calling us into our destiny. And our destiny is this, that we would have an intimate relationship with our Father God. That we would know Him. That we would know the extravagant grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we would love Him as our bridegroom King, as our soon coming King no matter how weak we are, no matter how strong we feel, and regardless of our past, regardless of our personality, regardless of our background or anything about us, we can be set ablaze with passion for God. And that's what I'm praying for as a church this year, that Lord Jesus set us on fire for you. Set us on fire for you. Don't let us be lukewarm. But Holy Spirit, set in us, set in our hearts, a blaze. Love for Jesus. Love for God with everything that we have. So if you're up for it, I want to encourage you to join us for that 21 days of prayer and fasting beginning today. And I want you to make this your New Year's resolution. Jot this down if you're taking notes with me. I will love God with all my heart. I will love him with all my heart. I will love him with all of my soul. I will love him with all of my mind. I will love him with all of my strength. Everything that I have, I will love the Lord my God.